Welcome to Electron Online and now let's take another look at Einstein's second postulate and this one of course deals with as measured in any inertial reference frame light propagates through space with velocity c independent of the motion of the source. So at this point people said yeah we can probably accept that uh, Maxwell already proved that the speed of light has to do with the permeability of free space and, um, and also the permittivity of free space. And so therefore people would kind of hang on to the idea that yes, I can see where light would move through space at a fixed value. But the people that are observing the light, depending upon what they're doing, what the source is doing, well that was kind of a step up from that. It may be difficult to understand and difficult to realize and even difficult to believe for people, even very intelligent people. So Einstein went on to say that the speed of light in free space has the same value in all inertial reference frames, which means it didn't matter what the source was doing, it didn't matter what the observer was doing, no matter what the source was, no matter what the observer was doing, the speed of light would always equal the speed of light c, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So as an illustration here, let's say we have observer A, actually this is the source of the light, and the observer A got bored, got on top of his spaceship, a very fast spaceship, by the way, moving at 0.9 C. And notice that he has a flashlight with him, and the flashlight is emanating light at the speed of light. V, of course, as soon as the light leaves the flashlight, it moves outward at the speed of light. But since he's already moving at 0.9 C, does that mean that the speed of light is now moving at 1.9 C? Or does that mean that the speed of light is moving at at C, and since he's moving at 0.9 C, the light is just barely getting away from him at 0.1 C. Well, 0.1 C is still pretty fast, but it would be much slower than C. And then there's another spaceship coming in the opposite direction, moving at negative 0.8 C because it's left, you know, towards the left, it's negative direction. And the observer also got bored, sits on top of his spaceship, sees the light approaching from the other spaceship, and observer B sees the light coming towards him now at what speed? Well, classical mechanics would say that we would have to add up all these velocities. And so, according to classical mechanics, this observer would see the light of speed coming towards him at 2.7 times the speed of light. 0.8 plus 0.9 plus 1. Again, Einstein said that's not going to be the case. And then we have a third observer standing on a nearby planet, looking at these events unfolding, and sees the light traveling this way. To this observer, does the light appear to be going at 1.9 C, or does it also appear to be going at 0.C? Again, if we take this sentence here to heart, Einstein claimed that no matter what inertial reference frame you're in, reference frame A, reference frame B, reference frame C, all three observers will see the light moving through space at the speed of light. Now that was actually a little bit too much to believe for a lot of people that said there's no way that can be possible. There's got to be some other things at play. They even were thinking about maybe some ether floating through space that either would speed up or slow down the speed of light relative to us. Again, Einstein said, whatever is happening, everybody, every observer sees light moving at the speed of light regardless what the source is doing or regardless what the observers are doing. As long as the observers are in an inertial reference frame, which means a non-accelerating reference frame. Any reference frame that's, that's standing still or is moving at a constant speed relative to one another, you will see any observer in those reference frames, you will see the speed of light moving at the speed of light. Wow, that was quite a claim, quite a, a statement. And again, the ramification of the statement, of course, resulted in the special theory of relativity. But again, we had to come up with some equations and we had to overcome a lot of doubt. People, when they heard this, they said, no way, that's not even possible. So that was the birth of the special theory of relativity. In the next video, we have another very interesting way of looking at this very concept and why people had so much trouble understanding and believing this particular concept. So stay tuned if you're still interested in this.